Nature is full of energy. It's everywhere. It's in the Niagara Falls. It's in the wind keeping the sky afloat. It's in the light of this wonderful sunset. All of this energy helps us run our civilization, and most of it we still take from Earth with devastating consequences. It's obvious. We cannot go on like this. I am very motivated by actually making a difference. Engineers want to change the world, so I cannot sit at home and complain about the world and nothing's going to be changing. I have to try. Because you need to think differently to solve challenges like climate change. So how can both industry and academia contribute to this transformation beyond their roles as large energy consumers? My name is Christina Sopfeld. Christina works for Ørsted in Copenhagen, Denmark, the world's leading offshore wind company. Energy accounts for 75% of greenhouse gas emissions. So this means this energy is our biggest lever to reduce global warming. We have to move from fossil energy to green energy. We are really at an inflection point now. Green power has now become, in two thirds of the world, cheaper than fossil energy. But much more must be done. More crucially, it has to happen faster. Unfortunately, the regulations for renewable energy are not as well organized as bike traffic in Copenhagen. This slows down the process. Governments play a very important role. And the most important thing that governments can do to accelerate the renewable build-out is to ensure that it happens fast. And they can do that by making sure that land and seabed is available, making sure that the consenting process is fast and predictable, because in this way, the developers and the supply chain can plan when they know how many megawatts are to be built and consented where and when. Politicians can certainly accelerate the transition towards greener energy. Further aspects are being worked on already by corporations as well as through science. My name is André Bardo. This is Professor André Bardo from ETH Zurich. For his studies, he calculates the outcome when using renewable energy systems in a holistic approach. We are not limited by renewable energy. If you calculate the size of the planet we would need to cover by photovoltaics to cover all energy demands, less than the size of England. We don't want to cover all of England, but on a global scale, this is nothing. And so the sun is sending much more energy than we would ever use as humankind. As I said before, energy is everywhere. However, storing and transporting renewable energy efficiently is still a challenge. Bardo and his team are researching different ways of solving this issue. We have the issue to transport the renewables. So the idea of Power2x is really to harvest the renewable energy we are having. So we have to take electrons to everything else. So we have to take power to X. And what's X? X could be heating, could be your car, or could be chemicals and fuels. A lot like this can already be done on a small scale. So what can we do to actually start moving forward and bring those ideas to life? The chemical industry in particular has a huge role to play when it comes to the green transformation. A lot of this technology in the inner transition is intrinsically chemistry. If we take an electrolyzer, for example, we can split water into hydrogen. This is a chemical reactor. That's what we all saw in high school in the chemistry class. Now we have to scale this up. This is where players like Fortescue Future Industries come in. They have been working on this for quite some time now. My name is Felicity Underhill. Felicity looks after Fortescue Future Industries business across the east coast of Australia and New Zealand. Fortescue Future Industries uh, has been set up to produce green hydrogen along with renewable energy to help us decarbonize the world. Green hydrogen is the most scalable of all the potential green renewable energy and one of the best examples of circular economy. Power to Ammonia is probably the best place to start for green hydrogen. And in fact, our first project um, that we're looking at is converting an existing ammonia plant, which is currently fed by fossil gas, uh, to change that out, convert it and have it run off green hydrogen instead. By being able to produce hydrogen from renewable energy, which once that is in the ground is an almost zero cost of energy um, during the day when the sun is shining or when the wind is blowing um, we're able to see the cost of hydrogen come down and as i say be disconnected from that reliance on global commodity prices 
we should make clear there's no way back to the old fossil world. Um, and I think what really changed thinking is the, the vision of a net zero CO2 emission world. This is the path we're going to be going. The companies who will do well in the future will also be the companies who will be successful in their decarbonization journey. I'm quite convinced it's not going to be a single person saving the planet. But I think if a lot of people are pushing the frontier, we can move very far ahead. When we work hand in hand across different sectors, we can help close the circle by jointly defossilizing our energy supply. Nature gives us all the resources we need. There are promising attempts of technology assisting in the process. It's up to us to connect the dots, and our experts showed us how. We basically have three challenges to make the world a greener place. One is the build out of more renewable electricity. Second is then to get that electricity to the end consumer. And thirdly, is to use that electricity to replace fossil fuels and feedstock. The final goal is quite clear and is transparent. It's just how long will we take? How much money do we want to lose on, uh, on this transition? Part of me often thinks, should I just be buying my post-apocalyptic home? But in order to avoid running away and hiding, I'm really hopeful that the work we're doing now is our best chance and is the reason why I haven't bought that house in the hills. We all need to team up for a circular future.